I've lived in Las Vegas for now five years and my thoughts on this city has definitely changed since I got here. There's so many good things about living in Las Vegas, but with all good things, of course, there's going to be some bad as well. If you're thinking about relocating to Las Vegas, but haven't made the decision yet, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be covering the top 10 cons about living in Las Vegas so you know what to expect before you decide to relocate here. Stay locked in with me until the end of this video because the number one reason you're not going to believe. Let's start this video off by getting right into something that no one likes in any city, no matter where you are. And if you guessed it, I'm talking about the traffic. Traffic in Las Vegas can be really bad, especially during that time where people are getting off work in between four and six o'clock. The worst of this traffic that you're going to see is on the 15 right when you're passing the strip. Most of the traffic in Las Vegas is going to be related to the construction that's going on throughout the entire city. Right now in Las Vegas, construction is inevitable, so you're always going to see traffic in construction zones. And with me originally being from Los Angeles, California, I really understand what traffic is. Until you've sat on the 405, the 110, or the 101 for hours at a time, you don't really understand what traffic is. Being in real estate, as you can imagine, I'm always traveling throughout the city helping clients and having different appointments. What I always do when I'm setting up a different appointment is I schedule 30 minute increments to get to wherever I need to go. My personal freeway that usually gets me around town that doesn't have too many issues is going to be the 215 freeway. This is going to be that freeway that runs in a circle around Las Vegas, so it has multiple stops where you don't have to get off the freeway to get to another part of town. One of the biggest cons about living in Las Vegas is definitely going to be the water shortages. And since Las Vegas is located in the desert, naturally you're going to be in a water shortage area. Las Vegas has limited natural water resources and population as well as demand are continuing to go up. When you live in Las Vegas like a local, you have to be mindful of your water usage. In the past few years, I've had several clients reach out to me asking about the water shortages in Las Vegas because they read about it online. I actually got the chance to go out to Lake Mead last week and I was riding on one of my friend's boat and I got to see what the current water levels are at Lake Mead. You can for sure see the decreased water levels at Lake Mead by just looking at the rock formations and seeing the discoloration. But it was a weekend out with my friends, so I did get a chance to go up and close and personal to Hoover Dam and then I actually got into the water. Now, I will give you a fair warning. The water at Lake Mead is freezing. And when I say freezing, I really mean freezing. When it comes to water usage from Lake Mead, Las Vegas has put in place a lot of water conservation efforts in order to stay on top of this issue. One of these efforts includes recycling indoor water. This means all of the water that is used indoors in the valley is then recycled back into Lake Mead. This means all of the water at your home from your showers, your laundry, and even the water from the fountains at the Bellagio is going to be treated and reused. In addition, there's going to be new pool size restrictions that have been added into law here in Las Vegas. This new law is going to restrict the size as well as the surface area of new pools as well as spas. So in the event you're doing an infinity pool or a waterfall, this is going to be included in that new law as well. There's also no new golf courses being developed and the ones that are already here that have natural grass, they're being replaced with turf. If you're building a pool at your home, the largest that pool can be is 600 square feet. The only way to get a pool bigger than this 600 square feet range is going to be buying a home that has a pool that was installed prior to this new law taking into effect. And depending on your design, you can get really creative and add different elements to your pool that makes it water efficient as well as still attractive. Landscaping is also going to be something that's very different here in Las Vegas because we are again in the desert. Not only is it going to be different with the type of plants that you can use out here in Las Vegas, it also is going to be with how often and frequently you can water them. Now you don't see much natural grass here in Las Vegas, but it does exist, but many homeowners end up going the route of turf instead of the natural grass. It's a great way to maintain a green look as well as it's easier on the maintenance side. But what most people do out here in Las Vegas is they do desert landscaping with different plants that don't require as much water. Now I want to talk to you about the homeless issue out here. And obviously this is going to be a nationwide issue in any state that you live in, but I want to talk about it locally here in Las Vegas. The current homeless population in Clark County is 7,928, which is a 56% increase over the last three years. Of this total, about 4,200 are going to be on the streets and another 3,700 are going to be in shelters or transitional housing. The thing that makes it hard for homeless people in Las Vegas to find shelter is most of the places only open up seven new spots per month. Right now, Las Vegas ranks 11th in the country for the homeless population. It's very noticeable in different parts of town, especially when you get to the outskirts of downtown Las Vegas. And of course, with homelessness, you're going to see an increase in crime as well as theft in different areas. But one of the craziest things about the Las Vegas homeless population is a lot of them don't even live on the surface of the streets. They live in underground tunnels. And throughout Las Vegas, they're known as tunnel people under the city. This is an area that can help them if it's really hot outside to get away from the sun. But if it starts raining really hard, this can be a flood risk for them and everything that they own. 
I'll be honest with you, it's gonna be a difficult task to completely eradicate homelessness in Las Vegas, but the city and the county are making efforts to provide additional funding for housing. One of the most common things I hear people complain about when it comes to Las Vegas is, oh my God, it's too hot. And yes, I will say it does get hot in Las Vegas, but let's be honest, what city doesn't really get hot during the summertime? Although it does get very hot in Las Vegas during the summertime, the beauty about living here is we get every season. We have a really beautiful fall. The temperatures drop during the winter time, so it's nice and chilly. And then in the springtime, things start to heat up again. When it's usually really hot outside in Las Vegas, most people are out there very briefly going from point A to point B. It's not like you're outside in Las Vegas baking in the sun unless you're out by the pool. On top of the heat that you're going to experience out here in Las Vegas, it's also going to be a challenge to keep your house cool and it's going to be a little bit pricey during the summertime. And this is why I recommend to all my clients, if you're living in Las Vegas, you absolutely should have solar. Before living in Las Vegas, I was in Orlando, Florida, and before that I was in San Francisco, California. I've never experienced this level of dry heat because in California in the Bay Area, it was a little cooler and it wasn't as dry. And then in Florida, it was very humid and very hot. And I know you might be wondering, how do we actually survive this heat out here in Las Vegas? The best way to survive the heat in Las Vegas is to always stay hydrated. I usually keep a hydro flask with me at all times during the summertime, and I don't go outside during peak heat hours. On top of Las Vegas being in the desert and having extreme heat, we also experience monsoons where we have extreme rain. This heavy rainfall could sometimes even cause flash flooding. Overall, the infrastructure of Las Vegas can't really handle a heavy influx of rain sometimes, and that's why you always see the Link parking garage flooding every time we get a heavy amount of rain. Las Vegas experiences over 300 days of sunlight throughout the year, and if you're from the Midwest, the South, or even the East Coast, I'm sure you would much rather have a warm city versus somewhere that is cold, snowing, tornadoes, or even hurricanes. Whether you're new to my channel or you've been here for a while, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Chris Brown, and I'm a real estate advisor with Simply Vegas. Here on my channel, I'll help you find your new home, whether you're local or relocating from somewhere else. I would appreciate it if you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell so you don't miss any of the good, the bad, the ugly about living in Las Vegas. And if you happen to be watching this video on a TV, scan the QR code that you see on your screen. If you would like to speak with me directly, you can reach out by using my contact information linked in the description below. Let's get into another big con that a lot of people are interested in when they're looking at relocating to Las Vegas. Next, let's talk about the cost of living here. The cost of living in Las Vegas has steadily been growing, especially in popular neighborhoods as well as sub-communities. With the population in Las Vegas continuing to grow as well as home prices in Las Vegas, it has become a little bit of a challenge for some people to afford to live here. A fun fact about why the cost of living in Las Vegas continues to grow is because people from California continue to relocate here. In the last four years alone, over 148,000 people have relocated from California to Las Vegas. That makes up about 43% of the population in the city. I remember relocating to Las Vegas in 2019 and the median home price for homes at that time were $310,000. In today's market, we're seeing numbers at about $460,000. That's nearly a 48% increase in the last five years. And historically, Las Vegas has been very prone to cycles in the real estate housing market. And if you look at the market now, a lot of homes in Las Vegas are actually overpriced. And that's not just a Las Vegas issue, that's a nationwide issue as well. But when market conditions eventually change, we can see a decrease in prices. A big factor in this is going to come down to supply and demand. When you have limited housing inventory and competition among a lot of buyers, that typically is going to drive up the pricing as well as create bidding wars. On the flip side, if you have an oversupply of homes in a down market with less demand, you're going to have a decrease in prices. Overall, when it comes to home prices in the country, Nevada is going to rank 12. And as I mentioned to you earlier in this video, a lot of people who are relocating to Las Vegas are coming from California. And the simple answer to why people keep relocating from California is because it's much more affordable than it is out there. Relocating from California to Las Vegas makes total sense because of affordability alone. California has the second highest home prices in the country right behind Hawaii. Right now, the median price point for a home in California is going to be $800,000. And I don't think you guys really understand what you can get for $800,000 here in Las Vegas. And when it comes to overall cost of living in the country, Nevada ranks 30th and California ranks third highest. And yes, even though people are continuing to relocate from California as well as other parts of the country to Las Vegas, home prices have gone up, but they're still affordable. The reality is no matter where you buy a home, home prices are always going to appreciate over time. And even with the uptick in pricing, Las Vegas is going to rank high in that affordability category in comparison to other large metropolitan cities. Now, if you've been in Las Vegas for a while, you've probably noticed an influx of construction going on throughout the entire city. Las Vegas is growing rapidly, and in return for that, there's going to be a lot of growth and new construction all over the city to keep up the pace. You're literally going to see construction cones all over Las Vegas, and sometimes you're going to ask the question if they're really working on anything or not. 
Usually when I drive to my office here in Henderson, I can count about 50 construction cones from start to finish when I arrive. It's a combination of road closures, merging, as well as detours. As much as I hate construction throughout the city, it does make me happy to some degree to see all the different construction because I know that we're growing very quickly for the better. Let's quickly talk about some new construction projects that are going on throughout the city. Right now in Las Vegas, we have new construction going on in Summerlin West, Summerlin South, the Southwest, Inspirata, Lake Las Vegas, Cadence, and other new construction communities in the Northwest like Kyle Canyon, as well as Sky Canyon. On top of all the new construction developments going on in Las Vegas, you're also going to have a new project off 215 in Buffalo where they're building a brand new Costco. This is going to be perfect for the Southwest because there's already so much going on over there and everyone loves Costco, right? We also have Hollywood 2.0 going on in Summerlin South, which is going to be Sony tapping into the Las Vegas market for their new production studios. And of course, we have two major projects going on on the strip where the Tropicana has been torn down and it's going to be turned into a baseball stadium. Then you also have the Mirage Hotel, which recently closed their doors as well. And they're turning that into the Hard Rock where they're going to build a giant guitar and it's going to completely change the dynamic and view of the Las Vegas skyline. I want to dive into another topic that a lot of people find a challenge living out here in Las Vegas. I'm talking about tourism. Las Vegas is no doubt the entertainment capital of the world, but we've relied so heavily on tourism to make that happen. And since Las Vegas is known as a tourist destination, we attract millions of visitors per year for our casinos, our resorts, entertainment venues, as well as conventions. The local economy relies heavily on tourism related industries like gaming, hospitality, entertainment, as well as retail. And even though tourism drives the economy and makes revenue for the city, it does make us vulnerable. We become vulnerable to fluctuations in travel patterns, economic downturns, as well as consumer spending. Since Las Vegas has been growing so rapidly, it has put a strain on our healthcare system, which is going to be the next con that I want to talk to you guys about. The population growth here in Las Vegas has outpaced the expansion of healthcare. For those of you who have a family relocated in Las Vegas, you have to explore your options when it comes to healthcare. With healthcare being a major factor, premiums can vary depending on your age, type of coverage, as well as pre-existing conditions. The average monthly premium for an individual in Las Vegas is going to be anywhere from $300 to $600, and a family is going to be anywhere from $800 to $1,500 per month. Now, these numbers can fluctuate, so it's always a good idea to do your own research to find something that works for your budget. And for those of you without health care coverage, it's going to cost an individual about $100 to $200 for a routine doctor visit. Urgent care clinics are going to be another way that you can get seen by a doctor, and those are going to range anywhere from about $150 to $300 for a visit. A basic dental checkup here in Las Vegas is going to be anywhere from $100 to $200 without insurance. Now me, I currently don't have a dental plan in place because I go back to my dentist every six months for a cleaning. I pay about $475 every six months where I can go in for x-rays, cleanings, as well as emergency visits. The reason why I don't have dental coverage is because about two years ago, I finished Invisalign and I don't need as much dental work now besides wearing my retainers every day which by the way, I'm okay at. I'm not the best, but I could get better. The cost of prescription drugs depends on the medication as well if it's gonna be something over the counter or prescribed. Now I will say visiting a specialist here in Las Vegas can get very expensive if you don't have insurance. Specialist visits here in Las Vegas can be anywhere from two to $500 or more depending on what you need to be seen for. Just like anything else, I recommend doing your research before relocating to Las Vegas to see what healthcare options make the most sense for you and if they're within your budget range. Before we wrap this video up with the top two cons about living in Las Vegas, I want you to share with me in the comments below one thing that you hate about your current city. I want to know what your biggest icks are about where you currently live. When you live in Las Vegas, you'll quickly recognize that there's going to be people who have relocated here from all over the country. And that's why the next con that I want to talk to you guys about is transient population. Las Vegas attracts a transient population because of hospitality, entertainment, and the influx of tourists. As a result, many residents come and go here frequently. Now me, I personally enjoy being able to meet people in Las Vegas that are from different areas of the country because it gives me an opportunity to expand my network and just learn more about other places other than where I live. The people who usually don't like living in Las Vegas are the ones who relocate here and they try to live like a tourist instead of a local. As a local, you have so much to do here in Las Vegas and you never have to go to the strip and be around tourists. And you're always going to have the biggest return on your investment when you're relocating when you establish residency in a place for the long term. The amenities, the attractions, and the outdoor recreational opportunities makes Las Vegas a great place to relocate to to set up those roots for the future. And now we made it to the final con about living in Las Vegas, and it's of course going to be something that everyone has heard about, read about, or knows about when it comes to Las Vegas, and I'm talking about the education system. The education system here in Las Vegas doesn't get the highest praise, especially on the public school side. 
Nevada ranks 49th in the country for education quality as well as funding. This low ranking can come from a combination of things like high student to teacher ratios as well as access to resources and technology. Now this doesn't mean your child is going to be unsuccessful if they go to a public school here in Las Vegas, but it does mean they're going to have limited access to the resources that other schools might have. Many of my clients who have children, they often go to the private or charter school route. The best overall selection of schools is going to reside in Summerlin. They have some of the highest ranked schools as well as the most options to choose from. I think families who are relocating to Las Vegas have to do their research again to see if they want to go the public, charter or private school route when they get here to Las Vegas. If you have a family and you're considering relocating to Las Vegas, comment below and I'll send you all the options that we have available here. And even though I don't have children yet, I do know that deciding on school options is going to be a huge factor when you're relocating to a new city. A big piece of advice I would give you if you're looking to relocate to Las Vegas is let's find the school that you want your child to go to before we find the home. We want to make sure that we buy a home zone for the school area that you want your child to go to. If you have children that are in the high school level range, you might want to consider Summerlin because of the options that they have available for you. Even though it's super unique and exciting to live in Las Vegas, I strongly encourage you to consider the 10 cons that I laid out for you today before deciding to call Las Vegas your new home. For more videos about relocating to Las Vegas or Henderson, click on one of the other videos on the screen. I appreciate you all watching. I'll see you on the next one.